Hello Intertubers and welcome to uh, the fifth and I think final episode of me playing Colonization. So I'm going to load not where we left off. I've played ahead a bit and uh, the reason for this is nothing hugely interesting has happened. Um, the other European powers have left me alone. Well, they've left me alone on the ground anyway. Uh, they've been bugging me slightly uh, in the water, but to be honest, I have I, I have enough ships to deal with that. Uh, I'm going to wait here for this to do whatever bookkeeping it has to do at startup. Okay, so. Uh, First things to note, there is a new there is a new colony here at Hartford, and it even has its own blacksmith, uh, and will soon have its own ore mines. Um, the intent here is this will be a second gun-producing colony. Oh yes, about that Penobscot has been built up. Um, it now has an arsenal, so just to explain this one. If I put these three guys to work here as gunsmiths... They're banging out 72 guns. Which is uh, pretty good, although the actual blacksmith here can't quite support them yet. Still working on that. guys back to work in other places because I want these tools to finish and make uh, to make the ironworks. Plymouth. Yeah, Plymouth is also training. But I'm going to abort that and um, make as many dragoons as I can. So a big question, why am I doing this? Oh, I'm about to declare independence. Okay, those guys can wait actually. attacked from the sea. I actually only have three colonies on the coast and each one of them has a fortress. That's Barbados, Jamestown and Penobscot. colony buildings. Fortress. Yeah, 200% defence bonus, which is quite good. There's one other thing. Um, founding fathers, like I've almost all of them. I think the most important one, and the last one I needed, is uh, Jan de Witt. And it doesn't tell me what he does. Fine, I'll look him up in the Colonopedia then. Jan de Witt. No, sorry, not Jan de Witt, but the other guy, Peter Stuyvesant, who allows me to build the Custom House. Uh, and yes, Jamestown, 
Jamestown has a custom house, which automatically exports stuff. So once you have this, you don't need a bunch of ships to take stuff uh, to Europe. You still need a bunch of ships to bring people back. But the fact of the matter is, I'm now producing so many people that I had to build a bunch of universities and colleges just to educate them all. Anyway, I'm going to turn sugar off because this is the place where we make rum, and we don't. And when I've dumped this sugar here, I want it to be turned into rum by these guys, not automatically sold. I think should be enough. So, declare independence. So the funny thing is, this game is very good at showing rather than telling. At the beginning of the game, independence would be unthinkable, because we need Europe for everything. But at this point, I need Europe for almost nothing. And the king is really annoying. The king constantly raises taxes. <laughs> Uh, and the prices that you're crashed down to uh, very little. So, give me liberty or give me death. Let's go. <laughs> oh, actually, catch your name is written God Emperor on the uh, <laughs> on the declaration. Abuses and usurpations cited. Ultimatum presented to the king. Expeditionary force dispatched to suppress rebellion. Well, I guess one other thing to look at. Um, economic advisor. Now, I have to say, I think that green on beige is the most hideous choice of colour scheme ever. But if we look at this, it tells you how much money I've made. I'm selling rum, 23k, cigars, 11k, cloth, 14k, coats, 21k. That's a ton of money, most of which was converted right back into buying more people from Europe. Anyway, let's go. So this is the good, another thing that I love about this game. Normally, whenever the Indians attack you, they get the ambush bonus. But at this point, we are now the natives, and uh, the English or British expeditionary force are the invaders, which means that we get the ambush bonus when we attack them. And uh, yeah. Make 5,000 Liberty Bells and you get a relief force. Alright, we've not got how to blacksmith and iron works. That's very helpful. Gunsmiths back to work gunsmithing. Uh, maybe accept this guy who will be teaching. And this guy can be gunsmithing. We're still making 60, which is enough to arm one guy per turn, right? What do we build now? Stable? here. Something to think about. Roanoke produces two soldiers.
right. Give me Jane's time later. And yeah, if you have dragoons, they or soldiers in a place that is loyal, then they can become continental army, which is very important. Right, so I'm going to move this caravan here, and the intent is just to provoke this ban of war to attack. So, uh, yeah, let's look at this. England gets men of war. This is the biggest and nastiest ship there is. Combat strength of 24. So I don't really want to tangle with it, although at some point I will be Zerg rushing them with my frigates. Also, this is the expeditionary force, minus the six guys who have landed. See, the way this works is every turn an enemy man of war will teleport to the shoreline next to one of my, my colonies and shit out six attackers. You can't blockade them because they just magically capture the ships if you try that. You also can't blockade them on the ground. Again, they will just magically capture uh, units on the ground if you do that. But you can put units everywhere on the ground except one place, which forces them to disembark somewhere bad, right? guys were a little bit late to the party. might be fit. Actually, I'll just go round. I get to attack. So yeah, I get the ambush bonus because they're in the forest. Which means I should win this. So this is mostly how you win. This is just how bad it is to be artillery in this situation. Ooh, they have cavalry. Which I successfully ramped with. Nice. But, but yes, if I attack the artillery, 
I'm attacking at 10, maybe. It's defending, and it's got this ridiculous artillery and open penalty. So, unsurprisingly, it's beaten. But they actually finished this entire squad off. No casualties, that was not here, okay. Oh, I need to go to this journey's time. Actually, can I only finish business at journey's time? Yeah, these guys become missionaries. I need 5,000 and I'm making 892 per turn, then I need, let's say, 7 more, 6 more turns, assuming I can't get production up a bit higher, which I actually can. Right, landing near Penobscot. So yeah, will it take the bait? It does. Attacking with 24 plus 50 should win. Oh, I did not want that to happen. <laughs> Should have put a small amount of stuff in the caravel, I guess. Some cargo of furs. Oh, yeah. One of my fur trappers is now at work in a mixed forest with, um, <laughs> with a special resource on it, uh, the beaver, which results in a crazy amount the first farm. Ah, and the fortress opens fire. So this is the best way to deal with the men of war. Fortresses can have unlimited firepower, depending on how much artillery you can uh, put in them. Sunk! Awesome! The book is gone, uh, for the moment anyway. Uh, you notice how it doesn't disappear when it loses a fight, it uh, reverts to um, just a soldier. Um, which isn't so bad because I have some, well, I was about to say, large stock piles of horses. Maybe I don't have them there. Because I've got 200 here, and 200 here. I probably should have built warehouse expansions before starting the war. Let's go up to 300. But whatever. Artillery. Now I want to wait here. Okay, the blacksmiths. Uh, yep, yeah, they'll just run past the enemy artillery, no problem. Of 
Well, too sorry that. See, now I'm gonna take these new guys who are just trained. See, these guys are only veterans. The veterans attack with, let's see, I think 4.5. So they're weaker than my regular uh, continental army. Alright, so they attack at 3. Not counting the attack bonus, yeah, 4.5. But this artillery stuck in the open. It's not going to do very well. And I can promote my, my guys this way. Now, where do these missionaries go? Drive a little bit too well. Okay, it's room in Boston for one more. Oops, that was a misclick. Now it's a 114. That's because of Thomas Payne, I think. Thomas Payne increases the liberty of production by the current tax rate. Now that's usually not as good as, um, uh, who is he? Thomas Jefferson? Yeah, Thomas Jefferson increases by 50%. And the tax rate didn't, got, didn't get that high, it's only about 25%. Again, Penobscot. And attacking the Caravel again, come on. Oh, how, how is this Caravel? so ridiculously tough. Make it make sense. Fortress opens fire again. 32 plus 50. It's actually 48, which isn't bad. No, wait. 32 plus 50. Yeah, 48. But that time's just damaged. I guess I need more uh, stuff. Okay, so the actual fight. Surprisingly lucky here. Oopsie. And this guy. Providence, I guess. a superstition here, which is that the RNG is sort of sticky, and if you lose a fight you should wait a bit before trying again. Seems to be nonsense, oh well. Okay, that was a misclick, doesn't matter much though. And we are back to the artillery. I don't think I have any uh, veterans to pop it, so I'll just use regular cavalry to hilariously overkill it. We're attacking with probably 10, possibly uh, 11 and a bit. And it's defending with um, 1.25. I'm going to park that guy here. That's because that's a desert, and um, deserts are unfortunately not great. Um, it's possible for an enemy ship to appear here. If it is, it can does as it can dump forces here and here. I wanted to put them here on the forest where there'd be an ambush bonus. So I'm just parking a guy there. It doesn't have to be. A dragoon actually could be a wagon train or anything. 
I, you know, I have an idea. I'm going to put pitiful amounts of stuff in this caravel. I'm going to move it here. Hopefully, that worked. Indian converts think I'll be disbanding those guys immediately. Uh, are you seriously testing the food shake down in the middle of the war? Another man of war sent crawling home. Be a little bit careful. It's possible to put the game in an unwinnable state by sinking the men of war. But that's not easy to do. Okay, so. I regret slightly is I don't have a dedicated food farm on which could be cranking up horses to high bread. Superstition is correct. Maybe the iron tree is streaky. I'm not sure what to do if it is. Oh, I can check my uh, Congress. 3758. <coughs> that means I get the intervention force in two turns. Not sure I need it, but still I will get it in two turns. Providence needs a statesman. Nobody else does.
Yeah, so this is why I'm not overly concerned with pissing off the Indians at this stage of the game. Ha <laughs> ha Another one sunk! These guys will start to arrive next turn. They do arrive one ship at a time. I think I've already chewed through maybe half of this English force. Ah, again! The RNG does not like me. Doesn't make the slightest bit of a difference, but I'll try attacking them from a hill. And that guy. Uh, Providence. Hartford has the most horses, so I'll send him there. Send him there as well. Usefulness of this stable rapidly dwindling. The horse breeding depends on how many horses you have. I'm gonna wait because I'm sure I made dragoons. Yeah, these guys. France declares war on England and joins our side. And more importantly, I was about to say it gives us some uh, some mob dudes, well that didn't seem to have happened, but nice. Damaged. Okay. So yeah, we get a massive intervention force now. Well, it's not massive but substantial. Not a good start. <laughs> Not a good start. Unfortunately, the stack of soldiers is like toughest first, so we have to get through the cavalry, which has a defense of six. Turtle up here because there's a reason I put a like a respectable amount of artillery in here. It's, it's not going to be easy for me to take it, even if I fail to kill them all. What's 
starting to believe this sticky RNG theory. How many from are there? A few pieces. Just the one. Hmm. Not hard to believe. Barbados. Okay, fine with me. Intervention force. Right, let's have a go at this enemy man of war. It. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> this guy's now making 40, which I think is the maximum possible. Ooh, it's up here 75% damage bonus for some reason. Get there in time. That's because it's a swamp, I think. <laughs> and this still gets routed. Come on. RNG does not like me. Of course, it liked me a lot at the start of this, this war, so. Yeah. That's more like it. Okay. This is a really not a good performance. We had the same mistake again, haven't I? Oh. 
got 75% ambush bonus, do your thing please. Theoretically possible, it's just unlikely. Maybe these dragoons will have better luck against the beaten up artillery. Okay, fine with me. Now attacking 64, so then 96 against 24, which is four times its strength. Only damaged. Okay, let's do this. Not stuff again. Okay, this time attacking with 72 plus 36, 108. <laughs> Still just damaged, not destroyed.
RNG still hates me. Okay. Yeah. 10, 5, 4, 19. So that's 3. 3 plus 1 loads. By the way, it's why it's important, wherever possible, not to plow the uh, the lands near your, um, not to plow a forest near the sea. So if you leave them as forests, you get this ambush bonus. Lots of artillery here. Wow. Routed by a damaged artillery. You don't see that often. Artillery in a fort. Hmm. It did not do very well. Open fire again with 72. Just damaged. Actual fighting. Cavalry. Routed. Bad news there. That's about it. Ah, uh, just damaged. They're really hard to sink. Cavalry? Ah, oh, terrible start. Terrible, terrible start.
Maybe I do believe the streaky RNG. They're almost beaten though. It doesn't, doesn't matter much that I'm losing so badly. More farming will hopefully mean more more horses. Not sure that's actually working out like that. This should work. Right, okay. That busted. over soon.
but they're not even going to capture any of my cities. It's a real pain when they do, by the way. Because, you know, the... The RAF force is slightly better than mine. It's the ambush bonus that's really... Oh, God. <laughs> really? Really? this time, I'm attacking at 120. Five times the strength. Oh, we didn't even die. Alright. And I think that's it. And this should be the end. Royal Expeditionary Force annihilated. General God Emperor Zix Fodger accepts surrender of all historic forces, or none of them, in brief ceremony. I guess in any brief. We are now independent, and uh, I'm sadly taking a demotion from God Emperor to President. Oh well. You've decided to let you go your own way. Yes. And very unusually for a game uh, this old, you get some kind of a cutscene for winning. And that's all it is, but it's more than zero, so more than what you usually get. So total score, not bad. big part is uh, you get a big plus 100% for being independent, which means you're really not getting much of a score without that. Uh, you could get a higher score from being bigger, but I just didn't see the point. Uh, my, 11, my 11 colonies were sufficient to fend off the um, the king, so oh, I just went independent immediately. And uh, I got a state named after me. No clue what that state is. But, uh, well, 76%. And that's not bad, really. And that's the end of that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little game. I, I really like it. I think it gets a lot of things right. I mean, one problem with um, with games like this is once you become the dominant, you know, superpower, then you basically win. You won the game, but without actually seeing a victory screen. But the War of Independence uh, changes that. Um, you basically have to prove that you're the biggest superpower around. Uh, I mean, the Europeans are really not my enemies, if I briefly keep playing. Um... Oh, yeah. So, let's see, the French... Ah, uh, you don't get it, fine. Then I'm going to load just before I declare independence. This is the state before independence. Military power 191 compared to 37 or 54. Naval power 64 compared to 24 or 8. 
Average colony 17, that's probably the most telling statistic. I mean, what is this? They got four colonies with average four. So they got 16 guys doing stuff. And I guess what? 14 guys just hanging around? I don't get it. Point is, I'm the superpower here, and I've, like, these guys aren't a threat to me, but uh, the War of Independence gives you kind of a good finish to this game, which I really like. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, probably be playing Privateer next or something. See ya.